of our discussion. Now, suppose a, an order P autoregressive time series process. This, this, this now becomes what we call a scalar autoregressive, autoregressive process. Generalizing this process for n dependent variables gives us an order P vector autoregression process. And here is how the error, error term is defined. Now, what a vector autoregression simply is, is that we estimate each dependent, var each dependent variable well, using its own, its own lags and the lags of other dependent variables. Now, from basic time series analysis, we know that a time series is stationary if its characteristic like polynomial has has modulo has a sorry is greater than one in absolute value so we have this we have this scalar autoregressive process of order two we can gain we can obtain the lag or backship operator then use this to s to calculate the eigenvalues oh wait my apologies. my apologies. Some, of, some of our signs are wrong though i'm sorry <laughs> Now, now, instead of calculating eigenvalues, we can always, always find the roots of the characteristic polynomial, you know, then see whether it is a stable system or not. Now, similarly, we can also so write a structural VAR in lag operator notation. Find the roots once again. Let's just see whether the system is stationary or not. Now, vector autoregressions have the following implicit assumptions. First, the intercept vector and coefficient matrix is a linear prediction of, of the dependent variable. As such, assuming stationarity, the s var system can be estimated consistently with n OLS regressions. Now, back to structural, structural equations models, we can also estimate these, these factors over time. Now, for example, we have this model using consumer savings, aggregate price, price, gross national product, and the nominal interest rate. Using old methods, using a simple structural equation model, we find ourselves with more endogeneity bias because of of influence across time periods. That's why using vector autoregressions, we can, we can obtain this model using these matrices and use, a v, use an SVAR to estimate the, the SEM over time. Now, we now, for vector autoregressions, we can also obtain what, what's called an impulse response function. This shows the effect of, of adding an additional variable on the odd, wait, sorry. The impulse response function shows the, the effect of, like, of an increase or decrease of a single instance of a variable on, on the dynamics of other variables in the dynamic system. Now, S, now, SVARs assume three types of correlations between each variable in the, in the system for an error term with the following distribution. The amolar structural relation assumes that the error term's variance, only, sorry, the error term's variance covariance matrix only contains variances of the prediction error so that the, the prediction error has the following form. The matrix A pre, post multiplied by the new error U sub T. The matrix A, sorry, the new error, sorry, the prediction error is distributed with zero expected value and the, fo and the following variance. Also, um, the pre-multiplied A should be bo bold face A. Now, um, the matrix A is defined as so, where the where the, 
where the diagonal is composed only of ones and the lower triangular part, part has this number of additional restrictions to estimate. The B model relation assumes that the error has variances normalized to one so that the error ha is distributed as so. Zero expected value and, and variance at one. The AB model assumes both the A and B models. Now, the AB model is very useful in estimating thing, um, economic variables defined as a system of linear equations. For example, in macroeconometrics, we have what's known as the ISLM model. So the AB model is usually used to estimate that. Now, beyond statistical theory, economic, economic intuition must also be used to explain results. Now, it's very useless to just estimate VA, SVARs everywhere if there's no, if no interpretations can be made using some sort of theoretical framework. That's why aside from checking diagnostics and the, and the like, economic theory is very useful in interpreting st estimation results. All right, now we go to the coding portion of our session. Um, I believe that you have data sets to be used. 